Are you traveling to Lisbon and don't know what to do there? Well, here's the perfect five-day itinerary for your stay. People say Portugal is Europe's best kept secret. And some say it's Europe's California. Well, Portugal is much older than California. Once a powerful maritime empire, Portugal boasts rich history, culture, and stunning nature, which makes it a great travel destination for anyone. In addition, its relatively low prices and warmer weather are other reasons you must visit Portugal. Without further ado, let's explore Portugal's hilly coastal capital city, Lisbon. Day 1 On the first day of any international trip, you will experience either jet lag or fatigue. The best thing to do on the first day would be an activity that doesn't require too many tasks, yet gives you an instant preview of your trip. In other words, you need a tour. Now we are on our way to walking tour. In Lisbon, walking tours are most common because the city has a lot of hills and narrow streets. And most attractions are adjacent with each other, especially in the Baixa, Chiado, and Alfama district. So bring your comfortable shoes because you are gonna walk a lot. I've never walked any street like this. No. <laughs> I did the chill out Lisbon free tour. It's a three hour walking tour with a passionate local guide. So you will learn a lot about the city. The only downside is that you won't have enough time to take photos and enjoy at your own speed. Also, it's not a free tour sponsored by the city or organizations, but a private business that asks you to pay what you will at the end. Bottom line, if you're staying in Lisbon for more than three days and plan to visit the attractions on your own afterwards, I think this tour will be worthwhile. That being said, a place you must visit on the first day in Lisbon is the St. George Castle viewpoint. It's a beautiful scenic spot overlooking the hills of Lisbon and the Tagus River, where you can watch the magical sunset. To cap the day off, stay in the Alfama district and have authentic Portuguese dinner at a nearby tapa. I just said Portuguese one. Perfect. We went to a place called O Bihansa, and my personal favorites were tuna, ham, and octopus. This is a funny story. Mm -hmm. 40, 50 years ago, nobody eats that. Only the fishermen. You know, there's that story about lobster also. 100 years ago, it used to be prisoner food only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Day two. I hope you're ready for full program as we'll travel from the past of Portugal to the present day. First stop is Belém Tower, a 16th century fortification that also serves as a ceremonial gateway to Lisbon for explorers. It's a prominent example of Manuelian style, boasting a lavish late Gothic architectural style of the Portuguese Renaissance era. This four-story tower has narrow spiral staircases that you can use to go up and down the tower to enter its room. And here's a tip for an easier trip. Buy tickets online in advance to avoid a long line at the ticket box. Within 10 minutes walk from the Belém Tower is the Monument of the Discoveries, a huge monument with impressive figure sculptures on both sides. It was built to commemorate 500 years of the death of Prince Henry the Navigator. You can learn more about its history at the exhibition on the first floor. If you walk another 20 minutes, you'll find MAAT Museum that exhibits modern and technological interactive art. The museum was pretty interesting, but I have to say their museum restaurant was better than my expectations. Not only is their food and ambience great, but the direct view of the Tagus River and the famous bridge that looks a lot like the Golden Gate Bridge is really nice. If you spend more than $30 per person, you will receive a free admission to the museum. Wow, very good. You should go here. It's rainy in Lisbon, Portugal. 
In the evening, have a drink at the LX Factory, a historical industrial complex now filled with trendy shops, bars, and restaurants to check out. Day 3. Let's have a spontaneous day, strolling around Baiksa Chiado district while checking out some of the important landmarks. First up is Santa Justa Lift, also called Carmo Lift. It's an elevator built in early 1900 that connects the lower streets of the Baiksa with a higher Largo de Carmo. Remember, Lisbon has many hills, which makes getting around more complicated. An elevator like this must have been a huge help. However, now there's a long line to get into the elevator. Personally, seeing the elevator from outside was a good enough experience. Got some nice photo? Yes, I got some very nice photo. Now, let's walk towards the Commerce Square, a vast square built on the site of a formal royal palace that was destroyed by an earthquake. In 1755, a devastating earthquake followed by tsunami and fire hit Lisbon and destroyed most of the city. This is the ruined Carmo convent, which shows the aftermath of the earthquake. The monument of King Joseph I was to symbolize the rebuilding of Lisbon. But according to our tour guide Jose, locals see this statue with a bit of a smirk. And here's the story. When you see the sculpture, you see the crown is actually placed on top of the minister's head, not the king's. Locals think King Josephus doesn't deserve any credit for rebuilding the city because he ran away, abandoning Lisbon and the people. It was the minister at the time who led a vigorous rebuilding effort. The monarchy in Portugal ended in 1910. Some wine time! Let's try, let's try to learn something, yes. And how about learning something fun this time? Like wine. While in the Commerce Square, I highly recommend you check out this wine tasting room. As wine enthusiasts, we were impressed by the variety and quantity of the wines we found here. They were all from Portugal. Oh, wine, all right. We tried several port wines, including vintage and late bottled vintage. One of the best years ever in Portugal. The staff was knowledgeable about the wines and kindly answered all the questions that my husband had. And he had a lot of questions. While being a little tipsy, we aimlessly walked enjoying the warm weather of Lisbon and arrived at the Pink Street. It's known for its bustling nightlife and is a popular spot to snap an Instagram photo to many people, myself included. Now it's time for some food. Head over to the Time Out Market near Pink Street, a spacious food court featuring local food vendors. You will find seafood, steakhouse, Asian food, full bars, and dessert shops here. At night, you can often find locals dancing and can even join them. Day 4. Let's explore Portuguese legacies. First stop is the Kochi Museum, which I think is one of the hidden gems of Lisbon. They have the finest historical coaches in the world. This one right here was used by King Philip II of Portugal to travel six months from Spain to Portugal in 1619. I've never seen this many carriages ranging from royal coaches to a prisoner's carriages in one place. You'll find so many interesting carriages here. It's time for another pastel de nata. Pastel de nata is a Portuguese style egg custard tart and it's a must try when you're in Lisbon. Since the museum was near the Pastel de Belém, it's a historical pastel de nata store created by Catholic monks in the 18th century. I'll share my review of their egg custard tarts in my upcoming video. Another historical vendor in Portugal is Taylor's Port, one of the largest port wine houses, founded in 1692. We went there and tried their tasting menu. Here's the pros. They sell nice souvenirs, and the staff was helpful and very knowledgeable about wine. Cons, 
Their tasting menu was quite pricey. For a small glass, you need to pay 6 to 11 euros. If you've been a fan of Taylor's port wine, it will be worth the visit. Finally, it's the last night in Lisbon. I suggest you go for a nice dinner and live photo music. Fado is a genre of music that originated from Lisbon in 1800. It is known for melancholy and mournful tunes and lyrics, often about the sea and life of the poor. We went to a place called Fado do Carmo for our Fado experience. I can easily see myself coming back here next time I'm in Lisbon. Their food was great, the ambience was nice, and it was only 39 euros for a three-course meal and several sets of live music. I strongly recommend this venue, it'll be worth every penny. How was Lisbon for you so far? Amazing. Day 5. Lisbon's been great, but maybe it's time to explore the other side of the Tagus River, because there are a number of good reasons for that. First, to get there, you will finally get to cross the Golden Gate-looking bridge that you've been seeing all along in Lisbon. Secondly, you can visit the Sanctuary of Christ, the King Statue, which was inspired by the Christ the Redeemer statue of Leo in Brazil, and get a panoramic view of Lisbon. Thirdly, you can have lunch at this popular restaurant called Ponto Final, which was featured in a Netflix show Somebody Feed Feel. And here's something that the show didn't tell you, but I will. The restaurant is actually located on the bottom of a cliff, so you need to take a lot of stairs to get there. And get out of there. That being said, I enjoyed having the unobstructed view of Lisbon while indulging myself with fresh seafood. I ordered grilled sardines and I definitely recommend you try it. It is one of the authentic Portuguese foods and it is very tasty. One thing to note about this restaurant is that you need to make a reservation in advance, otherwise you might have to wait for an hour or so. Okay, time to go back up again. By the same? We're gonna get hungry by the time we're on top of the hill. I think so. Our trip to Portugal actually didn't end here. After lunch, we drove to Algarve, a southern part of Portugal that boasts great beaches and stunning ocean caves. I'll share all of my experience in Algarve in my upcoming video. And one thing I didn't add to my 5-day Lisbon itinerary is my day trip to Sintra. And I'll also share my Sintra experience in my new video as well. A lot of new Portugal travel videos are coming, so make sure to subscribe to this channel if you like this video and want more of this. And please let me know in the comment below which side singing looks most interesting to you. Thanks for watching, I'm New Yorker Juhi and I'll see you next week.